it would be easy for me to sit here and say, you know, you should always, you know, take your health into first consideration, all that stuff. I know when I was, when I was a younger driver, as, as I said before, I drove with broken bones, I drove with concussions, I, I did it because I didn't want somebody else driving my car, I didn't want to be out of the seat, it's what I lived to do. And I, I, I would do anything to get back in that car as quickly as I possibly could. If they show signs of a concussion, uh, the, the term is uh, when in doubt, sit them out. If they show signs of a concussion, they need to be taken out of the game or out of the race at that time and then carefully observe for at least an hour. You really have to rely on the athlete themselves, the driver, uh, to report symptoms. Well, they're all different. <laughs> I mean, each concussion I had, and a lot of them I didn't actually really register. I had a concussion. Um, it was like a small bump, felt a little kind of, not confused, but a little, just not quite as sharp maybe. And then there was the big concussions when you know you were sort of losing memory for weeks at a time. It's an alteration in brain function as a result of biomechanical forces that act on the head. And you have to realize that the brain actually sits in a thick viscous fluid inside the skull so the head will move differentially from the brain itself. My last crash, the damage to the brain was caused by the speed of rotation apparently <laughs> and both him and Dr. Trammell were sort of explaining to me what happened and how my brain basically stayed still and the whole everything else moved around quickly and they did the damage to the brain by, by speed of rotation so you know you, my the helmet I wore that day really has no damage if you look at the helmet there's you would I'd be quite happy putting it back on now and and, and running it again it's commonly misunderstood that uh, you have to be unconscious in order to uh, have a concussion, and that's not true at all. In fact, uh, many concussions, I'd say a large percentage, maybe 30 percent, I'm just guessing there a little bit, uh, there's no uh, loss of consciousness whatsoever. The one at Goodwood in the Jaguar E-Type, apparently, yeah, I was, I was asleep. But otherwise, they said, no, I was chatting away. Not making much sense, but chatting away. If there's no loss of consciousness, the driver may uh, have difficulty uh, speaking in intelligent sentences, um, may have uh, complaint of difficulty with vision, may have ringing in his ears, uh, may have uh, trouble with balance. And then what uh, is done in most major sports now is a test called IMPACT that was uh, designed in, uh, at the University of Pittsburgh several years ago has been used uh, all over the world in thousands of uh, athletes with concussions. And this uh, takes 25, 30 minutes to administer. It's a neuropsychiatric exam. I took the impact test a lot, um, just every year as, a, as you know, doing the baseline. And then I took it, uh, I took it several times after, after crashes. Um, I remember vaguely taking it after my, my, my last crash, kind of through a fog, I remember kind of trying to work it all out, which proved conclusively that I did have a massive concussion. <laughs> Sometimes uh, the symptoms of a concussion uh, don't come on for one to two hours and, and occasionally, rarely, maybe not even until the next day. And uh, this, is, uh, uh, this can be a major issue, especially with club racing and uh, races that don't have somebody in attendance that's uh, looking for the subtle signs of a concussion and you may have someone who drives his uh, race car on a trailer to the event uh, has a concussion doesn't know it is not showing any uh, real valid symptoms and then goes to drive uh, home with the trailer I, mean, I remember crashing a car in germany in 1995 big old crash clearly did some damage to my to my head with a concussion i jumped in my car and drove back to scotland that night on a 12-hour road trip <laughs> You know, and you just think back now and go, you, what an idiot. We're very careful in how we put a, a driver uh, back into competition. In IndyCar, for example, uh, they have to go through about four or five stages uh, before uh, it, it's felt that they're safe to go back into competition. Knowing when it's right to get back in the car, again, at the top level, IndyCar and NASCAR, we've got doctors there, you know, with like Steve Olvey, you know, in, and, and those guys down in Miami. Um, and the team that surrounds him, Dr. Hawks, those guys are fantastic people. Not everybody has 
access to that. And, you know, the guys in sprint cars and stuff, they, they do serious damage with some of the crashes they have. And maybe the, the, those guys, for instance, and guys at the grassroots level as well, don't, don't have, have access to that. You know, and, the, and the drivers, the guys and girls that are, that are, uh, are competing in, in, in some of those series, um, I think just be cautious, just think about it a little bit. Just if you do bash your head, if you do have a, you know, you don't feel quite right, go get it checked out. That, that's what I would say. Just be a little cautious with it. Recovery from concussion is definitely a process. Uh, concussion causes inflammation in the brain. It causes a lot of changes in the brain at the cellular level. It's a small part of the brain that may be uh, affected and doesn't go really deep into the brain, but it has to heal just like uh, a bruise or a cut or anything any place else. And if it's not taken care of, the risk is that you're much more likely to get a second concussion much easier if the first concussion is not healed. You know, you can't see the damage I've done to my brain sitting here. If I had a broken arm and a sling or something, you could say, oh yeah, look at that guy. But you can't see that and you can't see with the other drivers too that, that, that have done that. You know, with, some good friends of mine have done a, done a fair bit of damage to the old melon as well. You don't just go back and get in your race car and get in another race. Uh, the proper way to do it is to start light uh, aerobic exercise, riding a stationary bicycle, for example. You've got to listen to your doctors. You got, you know, as a driver, you, everybody has access to a doctor, and I think you've got to be cautious about it. And basically, Dr. Ovi, tell me you're not getting back in the car because it's just not worth it. Um, that's why I stopped.